in a previous lecture, we looked at uh, transforming the flow around a circular cylinder uh, centered at the origin. Um, and we used a transformation to, uh, to make that flow around an ellipse. And we found the location of the foci. Those are the singularities as well in the flow. Um, and, uh, and we treated this original plane, we called that the Zeta plane. And, uh, and then our new transformation we put in the, what we call the Z plane. Um, and, uh, and recall that the um, velocity, the complex velocity in the Z plane um, was equal to a complex velocity in the Zeta plane divided by dz d zeta, where uh, z is a function of zeta, zeta is a function of z, that's our transformation between the two, okay? So we can actually make this a little bit more general by moving, uh, by allowing this cylinder uh, to be not just located at the origin in the zeta plane, but actually allowing it to have some uh, offset, and we're gonna call that uh, zeta naught. So zeta naught, this has a, again, a real and imaginary components um, where uh, this is the imaginary and the real axis, real and imaginary. So zeta naught is some complex number that tells us the offset of the cylinder in the zeta plane. And, um, and so the, the velocity potential in the zeta plane then um, can be written as, and this is for velocity around a cylinder uh, at an angle of attack, e to the i alpha, negative i alpha. So it can have an angle of attack uh, and circulation. So we'll include uh, gamma over two pi v infinity, natural log of zeta minus zeta naught, uh, plus r squared e to the i alpha, uh, over z oops that should be zeta zeta minus zeta naught okay so this is our velocity potential around a cylinder in the zeta plane um, and it includes uh, uh, the offset zeta naught uh, and it also can have an angle of attack and circulation okay and the um, the velocity potential in the zeta plane is uh, just the derivative of that with respect to zeta. So v infinity e to the minus i alpha uh, plus i gamma over 2 pi v infinity times 1 over zeta minus zeta naught. Uh, and then minus r squared e to the i alpha over zeta minus zeta naught squared. Okay, so that's the derivative. And um, so this is our complex velocity in the zeta plane, and now we want to transform that into the z plane. Um, and uh, we're again going to apply the same transformation, and that transformation is uh, z equals zeta plus r minus epsilon squared over zeta. Uh, or we can write that in terms of uh, zeta is equal to z plus or minus the square root of z squared minus 4 uh, r minus epsilon squared all over 2. Okay, now this is called the Joukowsky transformation. It's the same transformation we used previously to go from a cylinder to an ellipse, um, but uh, but here we're going to apply it to this more general um, uh, to this more general problem where that cylinder can be offset from the origin. Okay, so what that gives us is uh, if we plug that into W2 now, W2 of z, so this is going to be our velocity now in the z plane, is equal to, uh, remember that's equal to W1 of zeta divided by 
dz over d zeta. And so it's going to be equal to uh, w1 up there, which is just v infinity e to the minus i alpha plus i gamma over 2 pi v infinity 1 over zeta minus zeta naught minus r squared e to the i alpha over zeta minus zeta naught squared. And then we need to divide this by dz d zeta. Now uh, dz d zeta... Uh, dz d zeta, uh, we can uh, get that uh, from this uh, Joukowsky transformation, and that's simply uh, 1 minus r minus epsilon squared um, over zeta squared. Okay, so that just comes from, from the derivative of this equation here, dz d zeta. Okay, so we'll just put that in the denominator here. 1 minus r minus epsilon squared over zeta squared. Okay, so this is the flow now in the z-plane. And, uh, and this is actually flow around... Uh, so this is flow uh, around um, what we call a Joukowsky... cylinder. Okay, so um, so we use a Joukowsky transformation um, in this more general, uh, for this more general uh, case where that cylinder is offset from the center. And once we apply that transformation, uh, we get this, this flow field here, which is the, the flow around what we call a Joukowsky cylinder. Now we can actually find the surface of that cylinder. So let's look at... Uh, Let's look at the surface um, in the zeta plane. Zeta surface is, uh, so if we look up here at the zeta plane, uh, that surface is simply um, r e to the i theta, that's the surface of the cylinder, plus or offset by zeta naught. And that zeta naught is, remember, a complex uh, number, so that includes the, the x and the y offset there. So that's our, our surface in the zeta plane. That's rather straightforward. Uh, in the z plane, that's really the, the surface of interest for us as we want to know what the cylinder looks like in the z plane. Um, and that surface we get by plugging zeta surface into that equation there for the uh, transformation. So it's simply going to be zeta uh, surface plus uh, r minus epsilon squared or, over zeta uh, surface and we can just plug in zeta surface from up here into that equation so what we get is r e to the i theta uh, plus zeta naught uh, plus r minus epsilon squared over r e to the i theta uh, plus zeta naught okay remember zeta naught is that offset of the cylinder so this is now uh, the surface of that cylinder in the z plane. That tells us what that uh, uh, what that's going to look like in the z plane. Okay, so uh, this is like I said, this is called the Joukowsky cylinder, and uh, and it turns out that it's a more general case, like we've said. Um, now we can get back to a circular cylinder. So um, the circular cylinder is a special case of the Joukowsky cylinder when epsilon is equal to r. So if you look through and, um, and plug in epsilon equal to r, you see all types of terms dropping out. Um, so when epsilon equal to r, this, this drops out. And so what we get back then is just a circle over here in the z-plane um, if epsilon equals r. Now, the elliptic cylinder... Is, uh, is just a special case of a Joukowsky cylinder where zeta naught equals zero. So if, that, uh, if this offset here was zero, if that original cylinder was at the origin, then we would get back uh, this perfect ellipse over here like we showed in the previous video, okay? So um, 
This uh, Joukowsky cylinder has three singularities that we just want to point out here. Uh, so let's just write here singularities for the Joukowsky cylinder. Uh, so one of the, or, or two of them rather, uh, are where zeta equals a plus or minus r minus epsilon. So we see that uh, right here, if, if uh, zeta is equal to r minus epsilon, then uh, this term is going to be 1. We've got a 1 minus 1 in the denominator here, and so that means our flow is singular. Uh, the other is, because we have this offset now, when zeta equals zeta naught, that's, uh, if zeta equals zeta naught, that's another uh, singularity. And so we're going to need to be careful now. We're going to start to manipulate this, uh, this Joukowsky cylinder and, uh, and move it around in, uh, by using this, uh, this offset, zeta naught. And we just need to be careful about those singularities. Those singularities need to remain internal to the geometry in order for the flow to be conformal, to be able to conformally map it over. Um, uh, all the flow external to the geometry is the flow of interest. And so as long as those singularities stay inside of the geometries of interest, uh, then we're in good shape. So we'll just need to be aware of those as we move forward and and begin to work now with this Joukowsky cylinder.